The Old Testament reading is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from Ephesians, the fourth chapter. This I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, 
a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day so the Jews grumbled about him because he said I am the bread of life that came down from heaven they said is not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know how does he now say I have come down from heaven Jesus answered them do not grumble among yourselves No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from the Father. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from his only Son, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. The appointed gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter, serves as the basis for our meditation once more today. In Christ Jesus, my dear friends. I know, it sounds kind of like a broken record. But John really seeks to drive this point home. We as humans need bread. We need to sustain our life on this earth as we live it. And he makes the point that Jesus is that life bread that has come from heaven for us. In the past several years, many years, we have been confronted time and time again with suggestions and, yes, even warnings regarding the food that we eat. First, we're told not to eat more than one egg a week due to its high cholesterol content. Later, we were told that that study was incorrect. We're now told that we should eat more green and leafy vegetables and fruits and less red meat. Even today, there's an ongoing argument raging among nutritionists and doctors regarding the amount and type of cholesterol we should and should not have in our bodies. All the while, we've also been admonished regarding our smoking and our use of alcohol and other drugs. And yet we've been told that a little alcohol, perhaps a little wine, is helpful in preventing heart attacks. And you see, all of this is in the effort to live healthier 
and therefore longer and longer lives. One might even be seduced into thinking and believing that if one takes all of the precautions suggested, then a long and healthy life is inevitable. It's guaranteed to us. However, every one of us here this morning knows stories of seemingly healthy people who for any number of reasons don't live as long as expected. So, on the one hand, are we simply to ignore our health and live any way we please? Or do we take seriously those things that we know that will promote good health? In the Gospel text, appointed for this Sunday, St. John records for us the answer that Jesus gives to us. He says to us, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Now the Jews who pursued Jesus after the feeding of the 5,000 were not about to let this issue of Jesus' identity die. They're going to press him on this. They ask themselves, well, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, the carpenter? In other words, who does this guy think he is? Let alone, he says he's the bread of life, and then he says he came down from heaven. But that description of Jesus himself, they considered it to be absurd because they knew his parents, they knew his roots. And they felt because of that, he couldn't be who he said he was. Now, whether or not his audience believed what he said, he continued to expand and to expand on this theme of heavenly bread to describe himself. According to the appointed gospel, St. John is telling us today that he provides the kind of lasting life and bread that even the heavenly man of the Old Testament could not provide. As we know, the children of Israel who ate of that manna have long since passed. And we believe through faith that those who eat of the bread of life, Jesus, have a permanent life, an eternal life, which begins at the very moment that God brings them to faith in Christ. Faith is kind of an interesting topic, isn't it? It's kind of hard to describe for most people. It's not really a feeling. It's something that you believe. It's, it's someone you believe in that is far superior to a, our fellow humans. A pastor once said that, that you are sitting before me here in this church, that is a fact. That I am standing in this pulpit preaching is also a fact. But it is only faith that makes me believe that anyone ever really listens to the sermon. It is also a fact that it is our Lord and Savior Jesus who gives us through faith the vitality and the strength to live our lives both in the here and now and later throughout eternity. Ah, but we humans don't always do which is best for us, do we now? As a matter of fact, sometimes we would say we seldom do what is best for us. We seem to always see that which brings us pleasure now, today, and whose price we will probably have to pay sometime, either in the immediate or the distant future. We are much like the legendary young Hercules, who was emerging from boyhood into manhood and was pondering how he was to shape his life. The story goes that he had a dream that two women appeared before him in this dream, one very beautiful in form and luxurious in her dress. 
The other woman was stern and strict in her appearance and had on a simple white garment. The name of the first woman, her name was Pleasure. And the other woman's name was Virtue. So Pleasure promised to this young Hercules to lead him by the shortest road without any work on his part so that he would be able to enjoy every earthly pleasure. On the other hand, Virtue asked him to go with her along a path which she would experience labors and suffering, but in the long run where he would find a beautiful and good life worthy of his human strength. We have a similar option, you know. We can resist Jesus and the life that he offers to us, or we can respond to the work of the Holy Spirit and partake of God's free gift and of this bread of life that comes from heaven. For God's people, that simply means that we believe, not in our faith, but in the object of that faith, Christ Jesus our Lord. Our bread of heaven that has come down from our bread of life, that has come down from heaven for us. Throughout St. John's Gospel, Jesus makes the most of this bread image. Not only he knows that humans need nourishment, but he knows they need even a greater nourishment for their souls. Therefore, the main point of the text is that Jesus is that source of all life, and that he provides by grace through faith an everlasting life. It begins in the here and the now. Jesus wants the faithful to cling to him and to be absolutely certain and confident that our eternal life has already begun in and through faith in him. And we know that the major problem that many think that they can somehow find their own way to eternal life. Even God's people sometimes lose their way and forget their way in Christ and that, his, that that life in Christ may come to an end. But our path to Christ, our path that Christ uses to come to us is always through faith, through his word, through his sacraments. Therefore, the means of the goal of eternal life with Christ is his gracious gift of his own life, the bread, which he made available for us for our eternal life and for all of mankind. Now it is interesting to many scholars that this whole topic of life after life has always been an attractive concept for human beings. From the very ancient Egyptians who outfitted pyramids with lavish treasures for the use of their rulers in the presumed afterlife, to the most recent fascinations with near-death experiences of people who are declared clinically dead. People have wanted to believe that they can live in happiness, even in physical death. The message of Jesus is that we can have God's happiness, even after physical death, but not only then, but also now in our faith relationship with him, with this bread of life that has come down from heaven. What's more is that this life can begin here and now, and it continues into eternity even after we physically are no longer here. That thought is thoroughly Christian and completely truthful to announce the bread of life that came down from heaven is indeed our only hope and our only confidence for eternal life itself. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus.